Cool. All right. Awesome. Lapel mics, I'm still getting used to them. Um, anyway, okay. So Galatians 5.22. Um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Tonight, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit is kindness. Which, when Devin asked me if I would speak on kindness, I have to be completely honest. The first thing that came to my mind is, what? What do you say about kindness? It, what I kind of have thought about kindness is it's one of those things that everybody sort of knows about, but nobody really talks about that much explicitly, like the word kindness and what it means to be kind. And Of all the sermons that I've heard over the years, I really can't remember a sermon on the kindness of God's people. I've heard a few of the kindness of God towards man, but not really just being a kind people in general. Um, for those of you who are or have been parents in this room, um, I'll probably be seeking out your help in the next few years teaching my son about kindness. I mean, how do parents do that? Well, how do you teach your kids how to be kind, how to be kind people? Um, actually, in writing this sermon, I looked on, uh, there's this ehow.com, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, it, it, you just type in how to, and then whatever it is, and somebody has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do whatever it is. So I, I typed in how to teach your kids about kindness. And there were, a few, uh, there were a few different ones that came up. One of them was just talking about, like, you know, encouraging your children or reinforcing them somehow. Um, another one talked about having a kindness chart, um, different activities for your kids. Um, but the one thing they all had in common, which I thought was really interesting, is lead by example. You can't teach your children about kindness if you yourself are not kind to others. I thought, that's really cool. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. Like, that's how kindness is spread. It's spread by example. Kindness is contagious. Um, I have a video here. Uh, it's a commercial that many of you may have seen. Um, I thought it fit pretty well. Responsibility, but we all know the general idea that's getting across. Whatever you want to call it, responsibility, charity, love, generosity, benevolence. We all know we're talking about kindness. Um, and I love that commercial with the little twist at the end, like, oh, that's the guy that started off, and now he's... Anyway, um, so the whole idea that kindness is contagious. One person sees somebody doing something kind, and it, it brightens their day some. It makes them look for an opportunity to show that kindness to others. Even though it wasn't a kind act done to them specifically. They just saw it happen and said, hey, maybe the world's not such a bad place after all. Um, next slide. There we go. Um, so here we have sort of a working definition of kindness. Kind of a little pun in there, because kindness is about action. Um, to be kind is, these are a few definitions I found. Um, of a, good, of a good or benevolent nature or disposition as a person. You're a kind person. You're benevolent. Um, you're good. Uh, having or showing or proceeding from benevolence, a kind gesture. 
um, indulgent, considerate, or helpful, or humane when you're talking, especially when you're talking about like kindness towards animals, kindness towards creation. Um, those three came from dictionary.com. Uh, it shows how much my four years of college education prepared me for sermon, uh, <laughs> for writing sermons. Dictionary.com. Um, the next two, actually, I did benefit from. These were from my Greek lexicon. I actually looked up the Greek word here, and teachers serving would be proud. Um, uprightness in one's relations with others, or the quality of being beneficial or helpful. One thing I noticed, one common trend from all of these, is it has to do with the way with us in relation to others. Yourself in relationship to those around you, whether it be people, whether it be animals, whether it be the rest of creation, um, it, it's all it's all relational. Um, but I am added two extra words there: holistic and intentional. Kindness doesn't just happen by accident; it's intentional. It comes from living a life that says, you know, maybe the world isn't such a bad place after all. You know, it's so easy these days to get out, to get caught up in how much bad is in the world. You turn on the news and you hear about the next suicide bombing. You hear about this sex offender. You hear about this murder victim. You hear about this financial crisis or this company going into bankruptcy. You look at the paper and you see the local headlines of just how bad things have gotten. You don't hear news stories about people opening the doors for strangers. You don't hear news stories about a guy returning the change, the extra change that the cashier gave him by mistake. You don't hear about the random acts of kindness that happen hundreds, thousands of times over every day in our own lives. The kindness of strangers. You don't hear about that in the news. And so it's so easy to get caught up in the bad because you're not hearing about the good. Because the good doesn't sell. I don't know. But kindness is a holistic idea as well. It, it, it's not just you know, what you do when people are looking. It's who you are. It, it, it embodies every aspect of your life. So it's holistic and it's intentional. Um, kindness is making a comeback. I don't know if it ever left. But these are just some pretty outstanding statistics that I found while I was uh, looking, looking up stuff that, that has to do with kindness. Um, it says in 2009, Americans gave $303 billion to charities and nonprofits. And that's just money. That's just the money aspect of kindness. Um, and that's right in the midst of one of the harshest recessions we've had since the Great Depression. Uh, Three hundred and three billion dollars. What I found almost as surprising as that number was one third of that, one third of those donated funds went to religious organizations. Um, so you have over a hundred billion dollars in the year two thousand nine going towards places like highway, churches, um, or other religious organizations. Um, a uh, Facebook thing uh, that's, uh, that's becoming more popular is the Causes application. Um, I don't know if, how many of you have subscribed to a cause to support something. I know I have. Um, I have mm, maybe five or six causes that I'm supporting on Facebook, even though you know, I haven't really donated money to them. Uh, <laughs> that's another thing. I just support them. Um, 235,000 Nonprofits are represented on Facebook's causes application. And it's also the third most popular application with over 50 million subscribers, just like me, who just like a cause and never actually donate to it. We're, we're there with you in spirit, I guess, is sort of what we're thinking. Um, it's kind of like free advertisement, I guess. Uh, but kindness is making a comeback, if you will, if, if you'll just stick with me. Um, Andrew Baker, who's... Uh, a, a teacher and uh, over at Harding is the director of the Institute for Church and Family. Does a lot of work with youth. He's the re director of Uplift that's been going on these past few weeks. Um, I was in an adolescent education class with him, and this is a quote that really stuck with me. Uh, it says, the main difference 
between teenagers today